Hello everyone, مساء الخير. معك علي حميدي representing Techmill in the webinars uh, webinar series for futures and how they are used in the capital markets. Uh, I hope everybody is doing well and had a good week over the last week since we last discussed the last webinar last Tuesday. And we have more interesting information to cover uh, this evening. But before we start, we have a lot of information about Adnan Shweke from Tikmil. There was a question in the last week about how many of you can find the webinars that we did in the last YouTube channel. Adnan, if you can please provide the link. When uh, where everybody can access the webinars that have been done in the past, uh, that way uh, everybody can have a, uh, access to them at any time they need. Adnan uh, Tamana Halla. Here we go. Okay. Hello, hat bil bil chat room. You can find all the previous webinar recordings in one playlist on YouTube. We will link mojude. So iliman al lele. Please feel free to access the uh, the link at any time. And uh, just so you know, uh, tonight is going to be is our eighth webinar within the futures series. Uh, so you should be able to find the seven previous webinars. Uh, and this evening's webinar will be uh, up, uh, updated and uh, to the platform uh, within one to two business days. Come in. So, Adnan, uh, shukran. Have a good evening. Uh, I'll catch up with you later, and I'll get started now with the webinar itself. So, hello. What we're going to be discussing this evening uh, are the futures curves. Now, I promised uh, everyone last time that I will be trying my best to uh, incorporate Arabic uh, bil, uh, bil conversation, bil hadith, layli. So bear with me if it uh, if if uh, it's inaccurate in some shape or form, but. Uh, like I said, I will do the best I can, but tonight we're going to be discussing the futures curves and how to analyze and distinguish between uh, the, the different curves and uh, how to best use that in your decision making and to any type of positions that you uh, may or may not be take, uh, uh, investing in and taking in. Uh, without further ado, um, how to view and analyze uh, futures curves on specific commodities or assets. I like to keep uh, the hadith uh, very informal and conversational uh, so that uh, I'm actually having a conversation with you and try to explain a little more than just reading it off of the slides that are prepared, but you can read them of obviously, and I'll be discussing them in, in further uh, detail. Uh, but the main thing that we're gonna be discussing tonight are the two main types of futures curves that will help you distinguish where the specific asset or commodity is within the market uh, in relation to its spot price and in relation to uh, its future uh, price. Uh, depending on what type of maturity that you end up uh, choosing. Uh, so with that being said, the shape of the futures curve is important to commodity hedgers and speculators. So this works both ways. It's not necessarily just the hedgers or the speculators. It's the portfolio management. And the two main types of curves that they uh, pay attention to are one, the contango curve, and two, the backwardation curve. And behead al hadith, and I come in with the food, with the tafasil, with nine eton, or fajikon examples later in the presentation. But both care about whether the commodity futures markets 
are contango markets or normal backwardation markets. Normal backwardation is the same as the backwardation curve and the contain, contango and backwardation refer to the pattern of prices over time, specifically if the price of the contract is rising or falling. So uh, what are shuhinne and contango? I'm going to cover the screen shway, she, she. Uh, curves, contango, uh, backwardation. Contango refers to when the futures price is above the expected futures price, spot price. A contango market is often confused with a normal futures curve. Very simply, yani, uh, is a spot price, masalan, khamsin, with a future price, khamsu khamsin, this produces a contango curve. The spot price is lower than the expected futures price. Uh, what is backwardation? A normal backwardation or backwardation is when the futures price is below the expected spot price. And a normal backwardation market is often confused with an inverted futures curve. Yeah, and using the example of is a spot price khamsin or futures price khamsu khamsin, the backwardation bil ilib. Yeah, the spot price bit kun khamsu khamsin, or the futures uh, strike price or expiry date price bit kun khamsin. So, head al fada between contango and backwardation curves. And what do those look like? Now, Hon had an example of rolling futures in contango and backwardation. Shu manet rolling. Yani mo bedi fut ektiya the leli betafasil shu hi rolling futures. But rolling futures maneta kun an kun a portfolio of futures contracts, and you're rolling in one and uh, in and out of another, and into another, out of one and into another. Uh, contract over the course of time based on the positions that you have within your portfolio. But if we were to take just one specific isolated futures contract and look at, okay, what scenario are we in? Are we in a contango curve situation? Oh, are we in a backwardation curve situation? So if you look at the green line here, Horn, Bitcoin, Shu, is spot price of the actual commodity or asset that we are investing or trading in. And as time gets closer towards the expiry date, the price of the uh, futures, uh, the futures price is higher than the spot price. The backwardation Bitcoin Bitcoin is spot price. And as it here, Bitcoin Shu, the futures expiry date price. So, Bitcoin Ota, men, the actual spot price, and its curve is a down swinging curve. And this is why they think uh, it's often confused with an inverted curve. And the other contango contain curve is often looked at as a normal uh, type of futures curve. Okay, now to Khalini Shil Hala. Hey, can. Okay, so to better understand the difference of the two, to start with a static picture of a futures curve. Static, yani, maneta, manta tarak, yani, it's not dynamic. GMD, GMD, u safety. Uh, a static picture of the futures curve places future prices against contract maturities. So, uh, with if you look here, the head of Sura Hon Al Yamin, this graph, um, it's very simple where the blue would, uh, let's say, symbolize a normal futures curve, whereas the orange line would depict an inverted futures curve. Okay, and these are the price differences at different contract maturities. So, uh, as you can see, any a normal curve of if the spot price here in Hong Kong Bitcoin, for example, sixteen dollar a year, any bad year, Bitcoin twenty dollar, then bad six years, was it like five hundred twenty, or bad ten years, ten, etc., etc. Was it she on the inverted curve Bitcoin? And this is analogous or 
basically uh, similar to a plot of the term structure based on the interest rates. We're looking at prices for many different maturities as they extend into the horizon. So Hon Matsade is a Nahna, we look at Shamasir Halla Bisu very simply, Sham Biamlu Be America Halla. They're increasing and hiking interest rates as we speak. The Hadid Halla in January La Halla, the interest rates have increased uh, three quarters of a point, 75 basis points. And the next meeting uh, that they're going to minimum hike another 50 basis points, which would take the interest rate window, the Fed window is about the between 75 basis points and 1% all the way up to one and a quarter percent to one and a half percent. All of this has an effect and uh, let's say cascading effect and drawdown effect on futures pricings. Uh, based on specific assets, namely commodities, and more importantly so, interest rate uh, futures, uh, futures assets and contracts. So now that we know uh, what we're trying to identify within the futures market on a specific asset that you may be wanting to invest in or you already are invested in and looking for ways to either speculate further and or hedge your portfolio, now we're going to learn how to identify where the spot price is of the asset that you're invested in and what type of curve or scenario that it lies in and what are the normal outcomes. And it should be here under the normal, cir normal circumstances. Ashen, we have to understand as so uh, there is nothing that we would be able to uh, forecast with 100% accuracy, okay? Now, uh, it is important for both hedgers and speculators to know whether the commodity futures market are in contango or backwardation scenarios. So, awashi yani, شو ما كان هي الأسات أو كمادات في تكون ذهب في تكون نفط في تكون the indices في تكون interest rates في تكون agriculture شو ما كان هي will always end up having شو two things a spot price and a forward futures price embedded in a futures contract depending on the maturity so the maturity of each of these contracts will vary in the futures price of that contract. So you'll be able to see, okay, it's spot X, and then the futures price based on the maturity that you're looking at is about the consitushur or sini or sinionos or shumakin, yeah but it kun ala minal spot price, yeah but it kun ota minal spot price. But then but the tad of kif how to manage and how to analyze Shumaneta with these curves. Investors in general who are long, yani Maneta long, that are buyers, they end up buying, not selling short, they're holders or buyers, want a normal backwardation spot price, meaning that the future spot price is below the current spot price and want the future spot price to increase over time as it gets closer to maturity. Okay, and I'm going to give you some examples here. Uh, but first of all, I want to give uh, a little bit of information on historic on a historical chart on uh, oil, nafat, uh, crude oil. Uh, it's not up to date, meaning mafi al but it gives us up through 2015 the actual spot price when can it. And it gives us the forecast out to 2021. And I want you guys uh, to take a look and see how accurate or inaccurate or, or how, uh, let's say, relevant futures contracts are regarding specific assets. And in this case, it would be oil. Okay, so Anna, before we get started reading Shumaneta Kilshihon al Yamin, but the Kabir. Hide 
and get this into context. So, Hala, what we're looking at is Brent crude price. And if you look at the dates at the bottom, من ألفين وسبعة. Okay. And each column represents Sini. So, in time, Tahki, January ألفين وسبعة, January ألفين, sorry, ألفين uh, وثمانية. January 2009, January 2010, etc., etc., all the way to January 2021. Okay, I'm going to take this out of the way so we can have a better idea. All right, what we're looking at now, everything in black is the actual spot price of the movement of Brent crude. So you can see here it was at $60 a barrel. And it creeped up to 140 plus or minus, came back down to 40 plus or minus, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And then it stops here at the time that this example that I'm providing you in 2015. The spot price in 2015, Finan Ul Taliban, Kham Sin Okay. Now, what are we looking at? We're looking at now everything from Alfano Khamstash to Alfano Wahdu Ashreen. I don't want you to get too confused with all these colors. I'm going to make it very simple and simplify it. This blue line here represents the SEC. The SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission out of the United States, the forecast based on their year end of Alfano Arbatash. Look at their, it's basically a flat line forecast of plus or minus $100 a barrel over the course of what? The following five years, 16, 17, 18, 19, even 16, okay? If you look at the red line, this, these are the futures forward curve, the futures curve, min January 2015, moving through 2021. Now, where is what I want to get at today? Okay, so what we're missing out of this is from February 2021 all the way up to year to date as we speak today. But as of today, Hulla, looking at my screen here, crude oil is trading at $113 a barrel, plus or minus. Okay. Their forecast was plus or minus 100. The futures contracts, when the spot price was down here, but look at the curve. What type of curve is this? This is a shoe, a, con, a shoe contagion curve. Okay. Now, this type of curve indicates the spot price is lower than its future value at expiry. Okay. So, I'm going to get into in the discussion further uh, what types of scenarios Shumaneton uh, in theory Shumaneton and what to be looking for. Okay, so that we can see the information that I have for you listed to the right of the graph. There we go. Okay, so. Knowing the difference between the contango and the backwardation will help you avoid losses in futures markets. Now, how do you come in? Terja, the kilshi nahna hakina bil awal sabaa webinars bil nisbila futures. Shu hindi kif min astamilon. How do we value them? Uh, uh, what type of markets do we want to be involved in? Uh, understanding to take uh, when to take profits and when to cut losses. Uh, how hedgers use them, how speculators use them, et cetera, et cetera. So during contango, as the future price is higher, the profit is maximum when you sell it in the future. That makes sense. So if you, if you buy something uh, down here at the particular price that it is being offered at and you sell it later, well, you can ride the curve up and you can sell it at any point in time along this curve and this will provide you the profit that we're discussing. During backwardation, the futures price is going to decrease future, uh, further in the future. Pur uh, uh, purchasing it later for an investor would be a greater profit. 
So maneta, the longer you wait, as it gets closer to maturity, shuam besir, and he bitkun am am tinzel. I mean, perjipun idaye, bitkun he yishu am am tinzel am itbalish hon o am tinzel as it gets closer to the expiry date. So mazal zeshtarei to hon, baden jat bat to hon, bitkun fi less. You're going to have a lot more risk involved. This is a study to hone about to hone. This is what they're talking about. You're basically eliminating uh, the risk and the loss for significant losses. Well, I'll take an example. Yani, hey, this she machasu besu liambesir hala. Bas la I'll take an example. Yani, is the nafat hala am tadewal ala khamsin dollar al barmil, and the price of the futures contracts bitkun khamsu khamsin dollar. Albert Meal for the future, depending on whatever the maturity is. Fiat Kun, Shahar, Shaharain, Sittushar, Sini. And here the price is higher than the current spot price, which means it's a in a contango curve scenario. Wuhan bil ilib is a nafit am to deal with Allah Hamsu Hamsin dollar Albert Meal. Wusad al futures contract with Kun Hamsin dollar Albert Meal. The future price is lower than the current spot price, hence a backwardation curve. Now, this doesn't mean but the just because you're able to, uh, let's say, uh, isolate and uh, locate uh, a specific curve and opportunity within a particular asset or commodity. This doesn't mean that you should go out and buy futures if it's below the physical price of a commodity or sell them if the futures price are trading higher. This is nothing more than an identifier. This gives you information, okay? And when I get into the next slide, I'll be able to, to uh, get into further detail, but it's based on supply and demand. And it's telling you what the market is doing, what the market is wanting or needing, either supply is in, more than the demand, or there's more demand than the supply that the market is able to provide. So the market is more sophisticated, and these are why uh, this is not plain vanilla type of securities where uh, you, you uh, think you can uh, get it and make lots of money quickly and not know what's going on with the futures contracts, the dynamics, the mechanics and the sophistications, uh, sophistication involved in futures contracts, they really, really need to be understood thoroughly uh, before you get involved in them. So the market is more sophisticated and uh, than that, but this is one example of a strategy one could use and monitor constantly in some circumstances. So, how is a hadan amifakir walla, but the balish to trade or invest in futures, you need to have a starting point based on kilshi and akito, understanding the tick value and the risks involved, or kilhai the tafasil, or kilshi. Well, now you have a strategy starting point, then balish, okay, what type of curve scenario? are we looking at? Is it a contango curve situation or is it a backwardation curve scenario? And then based on history on that specific asset or commodity, okay, can it take similar type of situation? Uh, can it contango or in a rising interest rate environment, which we're in? Interest rates have not been Increased the amount that they've been increased this year. That inflation from the US market is at its highest level in the last 40 years. The official rate I'm uh, percent as the uh, CPI indicator saying where core inflation is. Real inflation most likely is closer to 10%, if not higher. What does that mean? You're talking about an increase in interest rates, men basically zero, the window can hit zero to 25 basis points at the beginning of the year. 
75 basis points la 1% now and forecasted to be 2.75 to 3% by the end of the year. So we are in an increased interest rate, increasing interest rate environment. So in order for us to use these curves, uh, let's say in a like for like situation, we have to go back and find in, uh, 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 an interest rate increase environment based on the same commodity or asset that you're wanting to get uh, a position in, whether you're hedging and or speculating, and find similarities to say, okay, is about the irja, empty, empty, and a I'm titled interest rates per America, and I'm gonna irja the water. Yeah, they, in 2008, they did what? They started decreasing the interest rates because of the, the housing collapse and the bubble to the zero rated interest rate environment that we've been in basically for the last six years, plus or minus. Uh, they increased rates one time under Trump's administration, and then they turned around and decreased them at the next Fed meeting uh, to bring it back down to where it was. But now, uh, but at that time, Martin, so inflation under official data, can it buy the band name the me, letting us be me? Hala inflation saw it many facilitated with me, and it's still increasing. So, what does that tell us? Interest rates in the in the short term, in the short term, most likely they will not be decreasing anytime soon. If anything, they're going to continue to hike and increase until the Fed feels that the economy should be, let's say, stable enough uh, to accommodate where the inflation is and bring it down. Uh, will this play out according to plan? Only time will tell. Uh, there is no crystal ball, but we can look back historically and see what, what's taken place. So uh, knowing where your starting point can be, here, markets are fluid and constantly changing. So decide if leveraged derivatives fit your risk profile before you commence trading as the risk of loss is significant. When you don't have an exit point or a stop loss on your position, uh, the losses can be tremendous. Uh, at the same time, uh, uh, you've got to have your entry, exit point, your stop loss points, and you've got to be consistent in your analyzation. And the tools that I'm informing you with tonight uh, are a very good starting point to identify possible scenarios for you to enter the market. Okay. Now, Getting back to Shahkit Abel regarding the supply and demand of, of, the, of the markets. In simple explanation of the dynamics, in essence, the term structure of commodity futures or the commodity curves are reflection underlying the supply and demand dynamics. And what contango and backwardation curves signify? What a contango in a usual context Okay, a usual feature of a normal market, or if the contango market is very steep, spot prices meaning too low versus the future price, it denotes a bearish market. What's a bearish market? A bearish market means there's more shoe, there's more sellers than there are buyers. A bullish market or uptrend means that there's more buyers than sellers. So if you identify a contango curve and you see that there's a very steep disconnect between the spot price and the future price, it usually denotes a bearish market. Why is this the case? Because no one wants the commodity today. There's poor demand or there's too much supply at the spot rates. So then it gets back to supply and demand. Where's the supply? It could be too much. And at the same time, nobody wants to pay the price that the spot is trading at. So if you have the supply and nobody's buying, what does that mean? 
Well, you have a contango curve situation. Backwardation is an unusual market. When I say unusual, which denotes the underlying bullish trend, bullish commandment and a bullish market, meaning there's more buyers than sellers, a very deep backwardation curve signifies that the market is witnessing a serious boost or supply squeeze. Spot prices or near futures prices rise very fast because buyers want to ensure their supply. So Shuman at the home, Bitcoin, you have your supply. And if you have a very steep backwardation curve, so it's going to look like, like this in your case versus a relative usual backwardation curve. It's going to be very steep. That means you're going to have the spot prices here. There could be a squeeze, okay? Meaning what we could be seeing now in raw materials. In raw materials like aluminum, steel, had the energy prices, uh, the, the prices have spiked. Akid is, is part of the, uh, uh, let's say, scenario, or uh, part of the bigger picture. But Kamena Matin Samitman, I'm Bahkikun, the Ambassador of America, Kamena. صلون زمان مش شايفين شو عم بصير هلا بالنسبة للإنفلاشن يعني عم تحكي عربين سنة يعني هيدي شو يعني هيدي عربين سنة would be considered uh, one minimum two generations okay uh, هاي النقطة وتاني نقطة هلا uh, لوين بدها توصل الإنفلاشن بعدها عم تطلع وهلا الانترست ريتس عم بيطلعوا ولما كان منو المعودين يعني أنا عم إلكون يعني أنا خلقينه ربيان بأميركا وانا عارفين المايند سيت تبعهم يعني انت عم تحكي يعني حق البنزين بامريكا بدك a gallon which is four liters okay uh, which has been plus or minus pending living in بين 3 دولار ل بنقول 5 6 دولار per gallon okay now all of a sudden the some of the cheaper states or lower income states America and bid for seven to twenty dollar per gallon, and the more expensive states, California, New York, and bid for more. So, يعني هيدي عم بتأثر كتير على الأمريكان ليش عشان أكتر لي أكتر يد الأمريكان بعيشوا من paycheck to paycheck, and they rely on their purchasing power on their money supply or cash flow. So is a uh, cash flow ma'amidzid uh, uh, they're not getting raises or they're not getting bonuses or ma'ashun safety, but kill shiam tirla min al benzin, lal akid, ulal shirib, lal tib, lal kill shi consumer uh, the consumer from a consumer driven market, am tirla aleyom, their purchasing power is decreasing leish, ashin fi rampant inflation power so now what happen is you're going to see most likely uh, the u.s market contract because they're going to start spending the american uh, consumer is going to st start spending on the necessities consumer staples benzene but they might start scaling back most likely on the non-consumables uh, 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 cyclicals uh, or luxury items, depending on what type of income bracket you're in, so that now they're saying, "Wallah, hella, benzene, I'm tigla, will akel, I'm tigla." We were not going to go to the cinema, masalan, for uh, instead of going twice a month, maybe we will only go once every two months, masalan. Or uh, they end up rebudgeting based on their cash flow from paycheck to paycheck because fi meet alf shagli aili aw shakhs baddu fakir fiya mithil nahna aishin hon bi lebnan anna rampant inflation illi mish ma'ana illi mish bi lebnan ma'ana hon yani akid sam'in al wada hon bi lebnan adda hi ta'bani bas nahna aishin bi wada yani lebnan is the worst economic uh, disaster 
in human civilization since 1850. So uh, to put it in relative terms, the Lamarkin خلي واحد مثلاً إذا واحد أمريكي إجا وعاش هون بلبنان عطيهم بس أسبوع أو أسبوعين يعني they would go crazy. They wouldn't understand how things are changing so fast on a daily basis. But on a larger, uh, on the largest market in the most stable market, when you have prices increasing. Uh, and in clips at a time, and they're feeling the pinch, then it's going to have a watered down effect on everything else that takes place uh, within the market itself. Uh, so this is what we mean when we're looking at identifying a contango curve versus a backwardation curve. What type of environment are we in now? Being able to retrace, find, uh, uh, historically speaking, within the markets, aimtin kin amtitla the interest rates, mit mahalla amtitla, aimtin kin the inflation, yani min ul thmeni bil mii au akter au ala mit ma nahna halla adin fi be bnesbi lil amerkan, and be able to find uh, via research and analyzation. Okay, where are some trends that we could identify that could be profitable trades and or profitable hedges to protect the portfolio that we are currently managing and involved in now at the moment. And last but not least, I always like to leave uh, the webinar with a famous quote. Uh, and I've said this before as part of doing your research understand what you get involved in, know why, uh, know how to protect yourself, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And this quote comes from Peter Lynch, uh, an American, a famous American investor, mutual fund manager, and philanthropist. Know what you own and know why you own it. futures contracts without understanding she the sophistication involved in the futures contracts, how they operate, and what sector you're operating in, the volatility, the liquidity, the li how deep is li the liquidity in the particular asset that you're involved in, how easy is it to get in and out to close positions. At the same time, what is the outlook based on the current market situation that we're involved in now? And then, getting back to before taking any type of position with a futures contract, take a look at your own portfolio and or trading account. Look at what you own and answer the question to yourself. Why do you own XYZ in your account? Can you answer this question? Can you answer why you own what you own in your portfolio? Okay. If you can't, then you need to reassess and I don't know if you can go back to the first one, square one, but you need to reassess or unwind your portfolio and start building an educated, research-based account, trading account and or portfolio, knowing the information that you have now based on the webinar series of knowing how to use futures contracts to help benefit the the uh, and compound your profitability you want to win more than you lose you're not going to win every single particular position it's impossible but if you're looking at uh, the bottom line where you have more profitable trades in the profitable column than you do in the in the loss column then that's the outcome that we're looking for. And it all goes back to knowing what you're doing, knowing what you own, why you're in it, and then how to better position yourself to protect yourself for the downside while not being greedy on the upside. Now, uh, with that being said, I will leave it here. I'll open up the uh, floor for any uh, questions that anybody may have. Uh, please go ahead and share them in the chat and see if I can't find where the chat room went. Uh, first of all, do we have any any questions?
going once, going twice. Perfect. But the shakir, but the shakir going uh, for your time. Uh, for all of you saying thank you, uh, I hope uh, you find this helpful and insightful. Um, I'll have, we'll have another webinar, inshallah, getting into uh, the more, uh, more semantics and details so that I can provide you with the informational tools needed to uh, better inform you so that you can make informed decisions and uh, please go back, uh, Adnan, on the chat room, had the link for the previous webinars. Uh, uh, there are seven previous ones. So you can go back and start from the first one up until now. I've tried to lay it out, each webinar, in the most simplistic way uh, to get you up to speed of understanding and how to use them. And now we're getting into a little more of the sophistication part of identifying possible patterns or entry or exit points uh, and, and uh, within the specific markets, whether they're commodities, indices, uh, or, or otherwise, and uh, help you uh, make you some money, inshallah. That's the whole point. So thank you all. Uh, we'll have a good evening. And I will look forward to seeing you again next week. Have a good week. Good luck with the markets. Careful, it's choppy. The markets today are in an upswing. The Dow is up 300 points. S&P is up 60 points. Uh, oil is about flat at 113. Gold is about flat at 1819. And uh, But for the most part, uh, we're, we're seeing a rebound in the US markets. So uh, we'll see if that's able to continue for the rest of the week. Um, considering that we had six uh, bloody days in a row uh, prior, uh, it, 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 and we'll see what happens. But uh, keep uh, your mind in the game, stay focused, stay sharp, and see you next week. Have a good evening. Tisbalakhir.